Okay, so this is the third part of the Bulwark Hollow uh, actual play series. Uh, this is the second realm that I've played through, or I've started to play through, of Rune. Uh, Rune, if you're not familiar, is a solo role-playing game that I'm designing that's very inspired by Souls-like games. Um, so your Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Sekiro, all that sort of stuff. Um, you basically explore these singular, terrifying places called realms. You walk around, you explore them, you fight enemies, you learn things, uh, you find new loot and, and stuff like that, and eventually try to kill a boss. And then you go and do that again somewhere else. Which means each of these realms is sort of like a um, an isolated experience. You're just in that realm doing that thing. Uh, so this is a realm that I didn't create. Um, this is created by Yug. Um, Dropped in the Gila RPG's Discord, so if you're interested in trying this, uh, this particular realm, you gotta join the Discord. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Rune, I'm gonna drop a couple links here in chat, and all these links will be in the VOD descriptions uh, as well. One is the Playtest Edition is up on Itch right now. You can go grab uh, a bunch of stuff that I released so you can start playtesting Rune. Uh, the other thing is the Rune uh rpg kickstarter page which you can follow the kickstarter not coming for a couple months but i like to just like build up hype ahead of time um and the the kickstarter will be for a printed version of the, the rule book uh, a big digital atlas of realms uh so we'll talk way more about that in the future for now we're gonna play we're gonna play we're gonna play some room like i said this is part three so if you haven't seen the first two parts of bulwark hollow um, none of this will make sense, <laughs> and that's fine. You'll, you'll, you won't know why all these circles are green. You won't know why I'm about to die to a troll, uh, but that's okay. It's okay to watch me die to a troll. So, um, Bulwark Hollow is a, a realm in which there's essentially a river that is, uh, slowly corrupting everything along it. Uh, I've, I've reached the end of the corruption where it has... It has gone from the source all the way to point one. Uh, every source that can be blighted has been blighted. Um, basically, how things get blighted is uh, by the realm clock filling up. So I've moved around and acted enough to the point where the, the clock is filled up. And uh, the whole realm is, is truly and royally fucked. Um, and I'm here at point nine. Uh, this is where I am. I have uh, I've got the slightly updated sheets here. Um, from the last time that we we showed this, I've got my new utility uh, weapon that I picked up, which is the charred whetstone. Um, basically, I can I can put a die in here, charge up this thing, and I can add plus one harm to my my attacks, uh, and they, it counts as fire harm, which is pretty cool, which I know is particularly useful with fighting the troll that I'm about to fight. Um, I haven't read the um, flavor text, so I want to read that, and then I want to talk about where we are. Uh, yes, one out of ten health is not a great place to be. Um, so this charred whetstone is something that I found in a cave while trying to ascend the, the mountain. Um, stolen from the realm of the profane forge, the many limb smiths who toil in black fire there would slay any who hold this treasure. So definitely not supposed to have this. <laughs> Definitely not supposed to have this. And Realm of the Profane Forge, that's cool. Realm is capitalized. What does that tell me? That tells me that that's another realm out there, right? This is the realm of Bulwark Hollow, but like this is another realm that's out there that we could, uh, maybe Yugi is going to create, uh, which is pretty neat. I am sitting at a really solid 1 out of 10 health. Um, I've got 3 stamina now, though, because I found my whetstone. We've got four lore. I've learned a whole bunch. I have the realm clock here, but I truly don't need it anymore. I've reached the point with this particular realm where uh, the realm clock can't go any higher. It's it's blighted everything. Um, so uh, I have it here just as a point of order, but I'm not going to fill it in anymore because <laughs> I've blighted the whole realm. I've got all this stuff that I've found along the way here. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just eat these preserved rations because they give me two uh, HP. So uh, I am going to go into this fight with three health instead of two or instead of one. Um, 
I'm rocking the Duelist Dagger and the Erupting Flame. These are uh, two of the weapons from the sort of uh, starter set of rune items that are available uh, that are being play tested right now. Um, and yeah, so I left myself a note to start. And this has been a while since I've played. So uh, if I'm trying to remember where things were or where I was, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've played this. So uh, bear in mind that I'm still figuring out, trying to remember what's going on. Uh, but I know I'm fighting a troll at nine. So uh, I have fought this troll. And I am currently searching. I haven't navigated yet. I'm searching through this cave where I found the charred whetstone, and I'm in the last delve here, which is fighting this unique troll. Uh, so I'm going to do this, and if I die, that's fine. Uh, because I want to know what's going on back at the sigil. Uh, we'll talk about why I want to know what's going on back at the sigil and when I die. Um, but if, if I die, it's not the worst thing in the world that could happen to me right now. What a fun thing to say um all right so let's let's set up this fight we're gonna just start the we're gonna kick things off here with a with a fight um so i've got a troll that is at d2 and i'm at a3 so let me just get those things set up first okay so got my little troll got me uh difficult terrain at b4 c3 and c4 so there there Ooh, and there okay so i've got some like craggly terrain and one thing i want to say about terrain is i've had so much fun playing Yugs realm because the way that they've set up the uh the terrain almost always reflects what's going on in the situation like there was terrain set up in such a way that represented like the river and a tree and like a body and like just really cool stuff so i'm i'm always excited to see the terrain because not only do i think it makes the the fight's more interesting, but like the you just put some thought into why the terrain is where it is, which is I think is which is cool, w way more than I do, <laughs> which is I don't do that. Uh, so a one, b one, and b three. Let's start with that. A one. Oh, these X's are too big. Is it a smaller thing? A one, b one, b three. Oh boy, yeah, this is some tight quarters here. Um, d one and d four. Wow, this is a tight map. Just me and the troll here. Um, so there's like this o open lane here, and then I could try and like navigate the uh, difficult terrain. I want to keep my distance because I have spells that, that let me attack from a distance. So that's my goal. Will I be able to do it? We'll find out. Um, but I think this charred whetstone is going to be super helpful. Yeah, this is <laughs> binary. This is a very rough map for three health. Absolutely. Um, all right, so I've got the setup here. Let's go. And this is a unique fight, meaning if I do kill this troll, it doesn't come back. Um, let's go find the troll. Oh. Troll. Now, I fought the troll once before, and it ran away from me. Um, and I had to fight its arm. Uh, so we're going fight to <laughs> fight it again. Um, I've got, let me set up the troll's health here. Uh, I'm just going to track it here on some dice uh, of my own. I get three weapon dice now, which is pretty cool for my stuff. Three stamina. Uh, and the troll is just going to have the one D6 when it acts. So it's time to play some rune. Let's see if I remember how to play rune. It's been a little bit. Um, all right, so first things first, let's figure out what the enemy is doing. So I'm going to roll a d6. I rolled a 1. What does a 1 do for the troll? The 1, on a roll of a 1 or a 2, it's going to move one space closer and deal 2 harm. The troll hurts me if it's in the same space or adjacent space, and it's going to try to move as close as possible within its range, which means it wants to be in the same space. So it's going to move one space closer, charging through this alley here. And if I move here or here, it will hurt me. So I don't want to be in either of those spaces. Um, okay, cool. So we know what the, the, the enemy is going to do. Time to see what I can do. I have 3d6, which is pretty cool. I've, I've not had 3d6 before. Uh, so I guess I need to give myself another die. 
Uh, I rolled a five, a two, and a two. Five, a two, and a two. Oh, I should go grab a die over here to show what the enemy is doing, just to track that. Um, cool. All right, so here we go. Um, five, two, and two. So what can I do with that? I can't sum any. I can't sum the five and the two because that makes a seven. That doesn't do me any good. But I could make a four out of either of these, uh, and have a five. It's been a while since I played, so I have to kind of like refresh myself with what my gear does, what generally I'm trying to do with this gear. So generally, I want high numbers with my erupting flame because uh, I actually what I really want is fives because the fives is the thing that lets me do things from a distance, uh, which is what I kind of need to be doing right now with this particular troll. Um, I also can charge up my whetstone which is something that I wasn't able to do because I didn't have that in previous fights. So I think I'm going to do that, actually. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to charge this sucker up. I'm going to apply the two here and the five here. So what does this let me do? First things first, do I gain any movement? Yes, I gain one movement. Perfect. That's what I need. I need to move myself right here. Um, harm two, but this is only if they're next to me or on the same space, which they're not. So my harm from the dagger doesn't do anything. Uh, but what I do get to do is launch a column of flame down the thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wreath my weapon, my fire spell in even more fire <laughs> and give it plus one harm uh, for this particular round. So I do, I send down this like especially fiery column down uh, or, you know, blast of fire down this uh, row here and deal three harm to the troll. Now... Uh, something happens <laughs> when that happens. Willie Allen, thank you so much for following. Um, so first things first, let's uh, let's uh, mark off three health on that troll. When the troll takes three plus harm, uh, a limb is severed in this order. Arm, so the the troll loses an arm. So I need to uh, <laughs> I'll just use this skeleton here. Uh. As it's, as it's little arm that has fallen off. Um, and then legs. It loses arms and then legs. Um, so uh, there's now a troll limb that I have to deal with on the field as well. Um, now here's a special thing to note about the troll limb. If the troll has been harmed by fire, it does not regain health from reattaching its limbs. That's really good to know. Because normally this thing can start getting its health back by like taking these arms and legs that have fallen off and like sticking them back on it's not gonna get that back because i am burning this motherfucker to the ground um so this is good news for me uh it does mean that there are two enemies that i have to deal with now but uh i, I can handle i can handle that um okay so that's the first the first round i'm actually pretty pretty happy with how that first round went uh that went that went swimmingly so uh, I, uh, we'll talk about my dice in just a second. Let's see what the enemy does. Let's roll for the arm and then the troll. Uh, a three and a six. Um, oops, nope, don't want a skeleton right now. I'm good with skeletons. Uh, six, well, that's that thing that lets the troll regenerate. So we'll, we'll come back to that in just a second here. Oh, a clover cam has been redeemed. She is not here. She's downstairs. So if she comes back, I promise, I will put her on screen. Um, okay, so let's figure out what this troll and this arm do with a three and a six. Um, so what does the troll limb do? Well, it's going to move uh, one and deal one. So I'm going to just move this here, uh, and it's going to move one uh, and deal one if I move next to this troll. Uh, or if I move next to this arm. The troll itself is going to move to and then reattach a limb in the same or adjacent space. That's interesting. Um, because it moves first and movement uh, is settled first for enemies, it's going to move here and then it's not going to be in range of attaching itself to the... What you call it? To the limb. So... Tough... Tough for you, troll. Uh, the troll maintains its minus one harm because it's lost an arm and 
it wouldn't have gained any health anyway because I'm burning it. So I feel really good about killing this troll, actually. I feel like I'm going to do a really good job. It also makes me laugh that the troll is so much smaller than me on the screen. Um, okay, so that's what the enemy is doing. I am only going to roll 2d6. Why am I ro rolling 2? I thought my stamina was 3. It's because I've uh, put in a die here into this charge spot, and until I spend all the charges of the whetstone, I don't get this die back. So i got to spend it one more time. Which means I just have 2d6 to roll for my weapons. I rolled a 6 and a 4. Uh, this is going to be great. I think I'm going to just murder this fool right now. Uh, 6 and 4 is amazing. Hey, BLG is here. Good to see you. Yeah, it's a it's a charged weapon. I've got a charged utility uh, item here, which I'm really excited about. Um, okay, so what can we do with that? Let me make that a little bigger. That'll do. Um, okay, so what can we do here with a six and four? Well, the troll has five health left and i can deal five <laughs> harm to an adjacent enemy and hurt myself which i'm more than willing to do uh because i think i can kill this limb no problem uh so what can i do with this here's what i'm gonna do boop boop i don't need to use my whetstone because i've got enough harm on my own i'm gonna use the move here the troll is not harming me so i don't need to worry about taking any additional harm it rolled a six uh, and then I'm just going to reach out, touch the troll on its face with my hand, and light it on fire. Uh, I just engulf that troll in flames with my erupting flame spell. I take two harm. It puts me down to one health. Good thing I had those rations earlier, right? Um, and so, you know, there there is that. I am at one health, but I do murder this troll. It feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, let's reset the board here. Uh, there's just the one little arm <laughs> running around. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to kill it. But th that's also famous last words. Uh, so let's see what the arm does. It gets a six. I think this is it trying to reattach itself. Yep, reattach to the troll. So the, tr the, the limb is just standing there begging me to kill it <laughs> at this point uh so let's roll my dice and see what i get i get a five and a two uh so yeah the <laughs> the little limb is like trying like it's like the arm is looking around like trying to find the body to like periscoping around looking for the body to attach itself can't find it wondering where it is what's that score like smoldering pile over there oh that's weird uh and then I emerge from the ashes uh, and just burn this fool to the to the ground. Uh, I I go here. I can move one. Cast down my uh, thing. I'm gonna just spend the whetstone anyway to make it three harm because even though I don't need to, burn this limb to the ground. Kill this thing. Did it. Totally nailed it. I thought I was gonna die to this troll, but then I remembered I'm the best gamer there is in the world. Uh, and with my pro gamer strats, I was able to, to defeat the troll and the, uh, its arm. So yeah, there we go. Troll dead. Very happy with that. Pro gamer. So let's go back up to this. Um, let's mark this as done just so that I don't think to do it ever again. And now I've killed this troll, which, um, gives me no immediate benefit which means there must be a benefit to killing this troll somewhere else um and looking back up here it means that like if i do die the troll is gone uh i, I don't think it comes back here um but i haven't done this which is the navigation um i haven't tried to climb the pass yet uh and you can see here you're gonna roll a d6 to see if you can climb the pass and on a one you have to fight that troll again <laughs> So the troll is dead. I, I don't have to worry about the troll fucking me up if I try to climb the mountain. So I'm going to try to climb the mountain. Um, and I can kind of just keep doing this. Um, 
it does advance the clock each time, but as I said at the beginning of the stream, I've advanced the clock as far as it can go. The whole world is blighted and ruined. Um, so as far as I know, it doesn't matter anymore, uh, advancing the clock. So I'm going to keep rolling a d6 until I roll either a 5, where I take 4 harm and die, or I roll a 6, and I make it to point 10. Yeah, don't roll a 5, right? So I roll a 2, 3, or 4, or actually a 1 through 4, doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter. Five and six, that does matter. So let's let's roll it up here. Roll the five. Died immediately. God damn it. Immediately. Uh immediately. I I confidently Look at the mountain pass, think, I just killed a troll, I can handle a mountain. <laughs> just immediately fall off the edge of the mountain. First roll, died right away. I'm dead. I'm dead. Did I have a death count going on anywhere? No, because it didn't matter as much here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, I died. Um... <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I died. Which is interesting. I'm glad I died. Because I wanted to go back to point one, Sigil, anyway, and see what happens now that it's blighted. So, it was all kind of part of my plan when you think about it. Um, okay, <laughs> so I'm dead. Uh, first of all, I have to remind myself what the death penalty is for this place. Because uh, I don't remember what it is. When you die, you resurrect that Sigil at full health. Um, however, a curse torments you. Roll a d6. Okay, I rolled a 1. Uh, I feel sluggish. Minus 1 move in combat. Fuck. Um, a curse lasts until you return to the point you died. Oh my god, I gotta go all, all the way back to point 9 to get my curse undone. That's right, because there's a shriveled plant, and if I unroot it, the curse goes away. So I gotta, I gotta beeline to point 9 pull that root out, and then I can move again in combat. That's rough. That's rough. That's death for you. Uh, okay, but we resurrect at Sigil, which is now blighted. This was not blighted before. Um, oh, the Sigil blight was changed. I don't know if this is the updated file or not. Uh... Does this look like the correct file? Oh no, I didn't. I might not have up uh, downloaded the most recent version of this. This is actually perfect timing that you showed up just as I was about to read the thing that was updated. Um, yeah, it is a very cool mechanic BLG. Um, I just think that Yugi's done a really good job of linking mechanics to to like the narrative, the fiction going on here with in terms of like where um, terrain is in like in fights and where uh, like how the this like plant has to be uprooted, this blight plant, which is a problem that's going on. Um, let me just go quickly check the Discord server. One second, everybody, while I look for uh, look for this updated file to see. Um, just to see if I have the uh, the correct thing. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just gonna read it on this other screen here. I believe this is the correct file. I believe this is the correct file. Um, oh, it's not the correct file. Damn it. I have the wrong file. Uh, so if you're watching this, watch as I try and quickly do uh, a little bit of fun tech work real quick as I try to update this. I am going to just open the file and go straight to do the, uh, the sigil page just to show you, um, what's going on there and we can, we can work with that. Ba -ba. Load it up. Okay. So we'll worry about my map and all that in a second here. Okay, let's read. Let's read it. If Sigil ever becomes blighted, your connection to this realm becomes fragile. 
After your resurrection at the now blighted sigil, every instance the clock is advanced deals you. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I just die. I lose health every time anything happens. Uh. <laughs> It's so hard. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. I'll just go run and get my body real quick. But that's going to die by the time I get there. Um, you must purify Sigil before dying again if you want to remain. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, my God. I have to purify... Did I write myself a note? Did I write myself a note? I've got like supplies and stuff. Uh, yeah, shit, right? I remember exactly you because like he's got what he needs, but uh, does he remember? And, and he doesn't. Spencer doesn't. So I got to look at my notes here. Um, I have something here about point two making stakes so maybe that's where i need to go i think i need to go to but i think three is important too okay let's look at the map i'm not gonna read ahead i'm not gonna read ahead it's, it's i've got to try to remember this so i'm here um four is where i fight the person with the plants that was a rough fight but i think that's pretty much all that's there two might be that cabin and so might be where I make the place. That might be the druid's cabin. And I know the druid is a big deal. I know three is a shrine. Um, so. Shit, which one do I go to? What do I have? I have leaves. I have stakes. And I have a key. I'm going to go to two. Because I have a thing that says make stakes. In my notes. And it's not the food, it's steaks. So I'm gonna go to two and hope that that is correct. So let's 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 first of all, I have ten health. Uh, and now now filling in the clock uh, matters. Now filling in the clock matters. Um, thanks, you. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now now we got to fill in the clock, and you fill in the clock as a reminder for Bulwark Hollow. Whenever you um, travel or complete an action at a point, so anytime I do something or move, I'm gonna lose an HP. So I'm gonna move to two. So boom, down to nine HP as I feel like myself being blighted. My the sigil, which is like your point of resurrection and rebirth as a, as an engraved in rune, it's been blighted. So it makes sense that my rebirth is messed up. Uh, that's really, really good. Okay, we are at the cabin. What can I do at the cabin? Uh, I can get a healing ointment with the key. Okay, I can do that. Um... Wait, requires lore five. Is that true? Did that get updated in the other one too? <laughs> lore five. Wait, I only have lore four. I'm not smart enough to make the stakes. Oh no. Oh no. Fuck. I'm not smart enough to make the stakes. <laughs> the stakes have never been higher. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to... Uh, I am going to search. I'm going to grab that... Um, I'm going to grab the healing ointment. I know I lost an HP to do that, but you gain 2 HP from drinking it. So I'm going to just grab it and drink it immediately. Uh, so it's a net gain of 1, right? Pro gamer move right there. This is too... <laughs> I I got to get smart fast. So now my now it's a matter of can I find a place where I will learn something 
as soon as possible. Um, let me just check my notes again, just to see if I have anything here. Point five has a lore four action that I need, and point eight has a lore eight action, which means there's a lot of lore for me to go down there and learn. I just gotta find it in time. Um, and not die by the time I get the stakes. I might die. I might die. Okay. Um, so I'm at two. What's next? Going to four. You gotta go to four. Um, I'll mark my health here in just a second. All right. So, ugh, poison saps through me. The blight courses through me. Um, Aha! This is where I can learn. 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 Look here. Um, I can learn. I just have to <laughs> have to win this fight. Um, but I have to be able to to win this fight. Um, let me just double check this fight versus uh the updated doc just in case. Um, they are uh, different. They're different. Oh, okay. Got to use this this updated one. Uh, because I remember you mentioning <laughs> this was a hard fight and it's been updated. Okay, so I'm doing this fight uh, where I add a Blighted Briar to this this dangerous, dangerous fight that I am in right now. So we're back at the river, the river where this weird motherfucker is like killing animals and feeding them to plants and uh, and it's getting real weird. That's where I am. Um, but uh, instead of the four creepers that it was before, it's just two, which uh, helps a lot. Okay, so let's get this thing started. If I can win this fight, I can learn. And then uh, maybe get back in time to, to do this. Uh, yeah, it's the wizard with the bad vibes, exactly. Uh, all right, so let's let's set up the, the fight here. Um, I'm at A4. And there's no permanent terrain, so let me get rid of all that stuff. Uh, I'm at A4. Boop, boop. Let me get rid of all that. If I remember correctly, it's difficult terrain. Yeah, it's it, it. This is the river. This is this is one of the things I'm talking about here. So like, there's all this difficult terrain here because this is the river that I'm finding this person along. It's really good. I like that a lot. Um, Blight Sower is going to be at C2. All right, so that's that weird druid, that or that, like, weird... <laughs> exactly, the wizard with the bad vibes. And two creepers, B2 and C1. B2. You hear, like, horrible screeching sounds. Uh, it's trash pickup day. Um, so that's what's going on. It's also why Clover is hiding. She hates the garbage truck. <laughs> Um, now there's also a blighted briar at A1. So I'll just, uh, I'll make this a spooky blue skeleton. Okay, so we've got our fight. Uh, me versus these fools. I have minus one move. Great time. Uh, I have minus one move, which I'm going to make real big so that I remember it. Uh, because I die. And my body is all the way up, up top, which means I can't move. I only have one item that lets me move, and it only lets me move one space anyway. So I'm standing right here. I'm going to fight everything that comes my way. Um, and ideally, this thing, <laughs> this thing, which I know is a ranged attacker, gets close to me. Uh, otherwise, I will just stand here and die to it. Um, so here we go. Here we go. Let's begin the fight, shall we? Uh, let's scroll down to our enemy cards. We've got a sower, a creeper, and a briar. Do you get the movement penalty and the dying penalty? Uh, the um, the dying penalty being the minus one health every time I do something, and the movement penalty being uh, go until I get my corpse. Yep, I get both of those. The only reason I have the minus one for every time I do something is because I got to maximum clock filled in this realm. I took my time. Um, which was... 
a problem, it turns out. <laughs> uh, all right, let's start off with our creepers, our two little plant buddies. Let's roll them first. Four and a five. Um, so we've got one moving three and the other one moving two and gooping me. Uh, so one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so they are they're getting dang close to me. Um, same and adjacent. So the one that moved two is going to deal one harm to me and root me in place. Root me all you want. Uh, I don't care. Uh, it means nothing to me. Um, okay, let's see what the Blighted Briar is doing. Uh, the Br Blighted Briar gets a three, which is um, move one. Uh, and deal one harm, and it uh, attacks at a range of adjacent or two spaces. So it will move here, and it is going to be dealing one harm to me because I am two spaces away from it right now. So I've got two harm coming my way so far. Last things uh, last, which is this uh, Blight Sower, and see what it does to me. It gets a four, move one, deal two harm. And it's happy where it is because it is now at um, within range and it is going to do two harm. So I've got four harm coming my way. Not great. Not great news for Spencer Campbell, but you know, I've been in I've been in worse scrapes than this. I get three dice to roll. Let's see how that goes. Uh, a six, a two, and a two. Six, a two, and a two. All right. What are we doing with a six, a two, and a two? Well, we're not really too worried about um not really too worried about what you call it uh movement so i'm not thinking about like the movement that i can get from things i'm mostly thinking about my ability to deflect damage and try and maximize harm now i didn't get my really coveted five which is what i really need i can't get a five out of any of this stuff which is what it which would have helped a lot with like clearing out some of these columns of stuff these guys have four two and three health respectively so okay so here's what i'm gonna what do i want to do here what do i want to do i don't want to do this the last thing i want to do is uh <laughs> take more harm than necessary so i don't want to do that um what do i want to do though um because I do want to, like, deflect a little. I do want to deflect a little. But I also want to at least kill one thing, if I, if possible. My brain is is slow on the uptake here. I might not charge. I might not charge my whetstone. Actually, I... I will charge my whetstone. Yeah, this is a surprisingly bad roll, right? This is, this is a hard roll to work with. Um, it is a, it is a tough role to work with. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and I'm going to, it's not great, but I have a charge in my thing. I'm going to burn the charge. I'm not deflecting. I'm going to take this one harm, bring it up to two and kill this plant, but I'm going to take all the harm, uh, coming my way uh so i kill this plant but i am going to take four harm which is that at the end of the day going to be the best play probably not but i've got covid brain right now and i can't figure it out so that, that'll have to do i've got one charge on my whetstone i got rooted but that's fine i'm already stuck in place anyway so let's see what um these fools do to me okay let's start with the the weird little creeper plant uh, it gets a one, which I think just means it runs on top of me. Yeah. Move three. It's going to get right on top of me. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, and then the, let's do the briar next. Briar gets a two. Move one, deal one. So right now I've got one from each of these. This gives actually two because it's in the same spot as me. Uh, and what is our good friend, the uh, nasty wizard going to do? Uh, it gets a three, it's going to deal one harm, and it's not moving, and that's not good for me, because it, <laughs> I'm in range, and I can't retaliate against this thing at all, uh, from where it's at. So that's, 
That's tricky. That's tricky. Okay, so right now I've got um, four harm coming my way. Two from this thing, one from each of these sources. So another four harm round. Let's see what I can do. I'm only rolling two dice this time. Four and four. Four and four. Oh, I really missed. I missed a five again. I, I need a five so bad uh, with my erupting flame, and I'm not going to be able to get it. Um, so four and four. I mean, here's what I can. Here's what I can do. Right? I can do that, which is not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, I am going to deal two harm to all adjacent enemies, uh, and I'm going to burn my stone or use up my stone, which will kill this thing uh because this thing has three health that goes up to three cinder up the briar uh and i am going to deflect two of the four harm coming my way so i do take only two harm instead of the four that i would take um <laughs> you uh i really need this motherfucker to move <laughs> Um, but I've got, I've got two enemies down, three health. Come on, come on. I know if I die, I, I'm pretty sure it's over. Like the realm is over, but I, I, I think I can, I can do this. If I can roll well, if I can roll well, come on. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, let's start with the plant. Let's start with the plant. Uh, it gets a three. It's not moving any closer. It's already where it is, but this is just telling me that it's going to deal one, increase to two, because we're in the same space. Um, what is the druid thing doing? Roll the two, uh, which means it's just staying where it is and <laughs> pinging me. I need it to move. I need the wizard to move. Uh, but it is wise and just... Zzz, zzz. So I've got three harm coming my way. Which, guess how much health I have? I got three. I, I'm also realizing now that um, I'm at the amount of health that, like, even if I win and, and learn what I need to learn, I'll die before I make it back to the place. But, oh well. I still want to win this fight out of principle. Still want to win this fight out of principle. I get all three of my stamina dice back. Yeah, BLG, that's exactly the problem. The, the, the wizard's being a dick. It is not in my column or row, which means that in, since I can't move, I can't do anything to it. Um, yeah, erupting flame not being able to do same is interesting. Might change the four to same and adjacent. Because like five counts your same space as part of column and row. Um, I might I might change that. Anyway, let's see what I do. I get a five, a four, and a two. Hey, there's that five I wanted for so long. Um, all right, we need to maximize deflection of harm, obviously. Um, so we're gonna do that. Gonna do that, gonna do that. I don't need to use the whetstone. I can just ignite the plant uh, and kill it in this spot because it only has two harm anyway. So boom. Burn the plant. I deflect two of the three harm coming my way. So I only take one harm. Um, and I've got a charged whetstone. Now I just need the wizard to move. If the wizard doesn't move. It will just stand there and murder me from afar away. Uh, so I really need the wizard to move. Okay. Three enemies down. One to go. Here we go. Roll the three. Which means it doesn't matter what I roll. I, I can roll all day long, and all I'm hoping at this point is to deflect, because the wizard is just pew, magic missiling me from far away. It's dealing one harm, and I need to deflect it. Uh, I rolled a four, a four, and a one. So I roll enough to deflect it, pew, so it's just me with a lightsaber, essentially, deflecting away the wizard's blast until the wizard decides to move closer so that I can murder it. Uh, yes, I can deflect the wizard pain. Um, that's again a thing that'll probably get uh, updated in the balancing of uh, the deflect keyword in particular. It'll probably only uh, be usable against like same and adjacent in the future. Um, and generally, uh, it's going to be tuned down. Um, but I'm playing with the semi broken version of it. Um, yeah, why won't the AI just die? <laughs> 
Uh, so let's see what the wizard does now. Roll the four. Pretty sure that means it moves. Move one to harm. It is trying to murder me. Um, yeah, something like that. That makes sense. Um, okay, so it is going to move one now. Now, I could be a fool and just move it here, and then I would never win. The, mur the, the, the wizard would murder me. But I am going to move it here because I do want a chance to try and win the fight. I need to be able to kill it from the column. Um, arrow catching. Oh, yeah, those are cool. Those are cool uh, keywords. Arrow catching, spell blocking. I like that. Uh, so two harm is coming my way. Uh, I'm going to roll my dice. I get a five and a one. Hey, folks. That looks real nice to me. Five and a one. Um, five and a one. So here's what I do. I do this. I do this. Um, would just hate if design space was left over for a ton of... <laughs> um, uh, so I deal two harm to this thing. It has two health left. I take one of the two harm that it's dealing to me. So I'm at one health. It has two health. We each basically need a chance to kill each other. Did you have that healing still? I used it. I used it before I fought the troll. Uh, and then I fell to my death on the mountain. And I didn't even need to use it against the troll, which is a shame. Uh, all right, me versus a wizard. What is the wizard going to do? Gets a two, so it's just magic missling me. Can I successfully roll another five? Let's find out. Six and six. <laughs> Do you realize how bad that is? Do you realize how bad it is to roll six and six? Do you realize? Do you understand? Do you think normally six and six is a really great uh, roll? Double sixes? I did get it from the druid cabin, and then I drank it right away and came here. <laughs> and then I got murdered. Six and six is normally a perfect... Like, it's a, it's a great roll. Normally, you want this. Um, <laughs> put them both into my thing and just really murder myself. <laughs> yeah, six and six. That sucks. That sucks for me, which is wild that six and six sucks for me. Um, normally I could do so much harm, right? Like, I would be able to just truly murder something that was near me. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, there's nothing near me. The wizard is standing a few spaces away going, Aha! Magic missiles me right in between the eyes, and I fall dead. Fall dead. I don't have the ability to deflect any of that incoming harm, and I die. I think it is perfect. I think it is truly perfect that I died on double sixes. And I think that means the realm is over. I think I've lost. Let's go to the, let's go back to Sigil. If you die while Sigil is blighted, read the following text. Your skin begins to blister and crack. Your bones becoming brittle your very essence seeping away. Your sigil shatters, disconnecting you from this realm. You feel a shudder of delight in the far northern mountains as you are drained of your runic powers. Motherfucker. <laughs> this is, sadly, the end of your journey through Bulwark Hollow. Your runes and your essence are now being consumed by another. When you arise in the next realm, you cannot benefit from your previously acquired runes until you next inscribe one. <gasps> this is a like a big death penalty. This is a death penalty that like messes you up in the future. Oh my god. That's really good, first of all. Like I love that idea. And then you gain your runes back. So if you're not familiar, runes are like the big um they're like the the one of the major forms of advancement that you get in in rune. Just if you kill the boss of a realm, you get their rune, the rune that you like carve into your being, you inscribe into you, um, and you can hold on to three of them. You can equip three of them at a given time. These are like passive bonuses that you get. Um, think of them like the talismans of Elden Ring. They could be things like plus five to max health. They could be things like. Um, Errands from uh, the, <clears throat> pardon me, Coral Rock, where 
uh, you could kind of like tidal wave across the battlefield. Sorry about that. Um, and now you can't you can't use any of them until you kill the next boss. That's brutal and really cool. Which then like because you can choose the order of the realms that you go engage with. This is your opportunity to think, okay, I kind of want to find an easy realm. I want to find a realm that's maybe smaller so that I can kill a boss right away and get my stuff back. I don't want to go do a really tough uh, realm next. Like Binaries Realm, which is one of the next ones I'm going to play. I haven't been reading too much uh, what people have been saying in the Discord, but Binaries sounds fucking hard. <laughs> it sounds really hard. Um, and so like... I would not want to play Binary's Realm first because I know I'm not I'm not gonna be able to get my runes back for a while. Yeah, you want to look for that level one realm, which will be a thing that I know a few folks in the Discord have been talking about, like kind of thinking about like difficulty levels of realms and things like that. Um, very very cool. Um, I think that, yeah, exactly. So Binary and Yug were talking about this is a bad ending, but it's a good way to get people to play lower level realms. Yes, exactly. Great. Excellent. We're all on the same page. Fuck yeah. That all, I love that when our designer brains come together from these different places. Um, so that's it. That's the end of my, um, that's the end of my playthrough of Bulwark Hollow. I died. I lost, which I love. I love that. I love that I died. I love that I lost. I love that I lost on double sixes too. Like that feels really good to me that I died on double sixes and then I died, died because of it. Um, that feels very good. That feels very good to me. Um, wow, this was super fun. So thanks so much folks for watching. Uh, the This is part three of our second AP series of uh, Rune Realms uh, made by uh, amazing people that aren't me. Um, Yug's um, realm that we just went through, Bulwark Hollow, is in the Discord. So if you do want to check this out, want to play this on your own, um, jump into the Discord. Uh, the, the file is there. A couple other things. Uh, these links are all going to be, in, like I said, in the description below, but just for folks who are here in chat. Um, if you want to play Rune right now, the playtest materials are up on itch. There's a realm that I've made that you can try out. There's a very railroady, simple tutorial realm that teaches you the game. There's a bigger realm that you can explore that's more open world. There's the rules, there's resources. Uh, and then uh, if you want to check out uh, and uh, follow the Rune Kickstarter campaign, that campaign's coming in about two, two and a half months, something like that. Um, but I like to build up the hype ahead of time. So uh, you can click that link. You can follow the campaign. You'll get a notification when things get started. I will be back to do another one of these APs um, in the near future. Uh, I'm hoping to do a bunch of these, uh, especially as we get closer to the, the campaign itself. So hope you all have had fun watching this. I've had a ton of fun playing it. Uh, so I will talk to you all next time. See you, everybody.